Yeah, um, thank you very much, Chair. Um, uh, just following on from that, uh, Mr. Parry, uh, what discussions have you had with the Premier League about promotion and relegation? Uh, our conversations have been very straightforward. Uh, we expect three clubs to be promoted. Uh, the Premier League is aware of our position on that. Uh, in all of the conversations that we've had with the Premier League, I think their position is they expect three clubs to be relegated. What uh, would happen if they, um, if they change their mind on that? Uh, well, I think you can expect the lawyers are going to get wealthy if that happens. Um, there will be uh, a degree of outrage, varying degree of outrage from a number of our clubs in the Championship. Um, it would be a breach of the tripartite agreement between us, the Premier League and the Football Association. Uh, I suspect the Football Association would have a position on it as well. So I think the safe answer to that is it would get very messy because our expectation is that there will be three clubs promoted from the championship. Shouldn't the principle be that you should, whatever happens around all of this, that you should finish one season before you start another? Um, I think that is a point of view. Um, as I said, I don't think we have too many right answers at the moment. Uh, there, there is a scenario in which we could all delay. We could come back and, and restart, uh, finish this season in September or in January. Um, the counter argument, the fundamental counter argument to that is the sporting integrity one, because we'd be, we'd be starting again with completely different squads. Um, that would be uh, that, that would be unfortunate to say the least. And as I said, given all the challenges we're facing and, and the uncertainties we're facing around next season, the economics, the logistics, um, I mean, who knows when it's going to be safe to return? Who knows whether there's going to be a second wave of this virus? Who knows whether uh, next season is going to be interrupted? I think on balance, uh, we, we have to resolve this season quickly and then move on. Uh, enable ourselves to, to plan next season with, with clarity and, and removing as much clutter as possible. If, if you manage to get back to, um, to, to playing out this season, um, my own club, Cardiff City, is a couple of points off the, uh, off the, the places at the moment. But if you did manage to get back playing, is there any discussion below Premier League level about this idea of playing on neutral grounds to avoid fans, fans congregating? Um, there's been we're, we're modeling many scenarios um we our preference would be to play on the uh, on the 71 grounds um we're not sure that there is an overwhelming argument particularly if we go down um our divisions that the uh, uh the, that the probability of fans congregating is a major one um we've had it is at big clubs like cardiff city mr parry possibly uh, possibly, absolutely. And as I said, what we're not going to do is to take any decisions which will impose strain on the emergency services or the frontline services. So any decision that we took would be guided by government and guided by discussions with the, the police and the safety authorities. So, Did you hear um, Gordon Taylor on the Today programme this morning on the BBC talk about possibly playing um, halves of football less than 45 minutes and and did you understand what that was about and have there been any discussions about that uh i didn't hear it um i have just been told about it um it, what, what do you think that might have been about i don't know there, there haven't been any discussions about it uh that i'm aware of there have been discussions about um uh with the fa and with fifa about increasing the number of substitutes allowed to five um and i mean clearly it would be to reduce the uh I guess it's the, the aim could only be to reduce the uh, the strain on the players who'll be coming back after a fairly long period away. Um, I mean, I, I don't think we should be ruling out any creative ideas at the moment, given all the challenges we face. Um, as I said, not heard that one before, but no reason why it shouldn't be added into the uh, the creative. What, what would be what would be the purpose of it? Well, I guess we may end up with a situation where we'll have a very compressed fixture schedule, where we'll be trying to cram um, more games in than normal. Uh, and, and so perhaps the thinking is that, uh, as I said, that would alleviate the, the tiredness and 
help the players with recovery, uh, maybe reduce the likelihood of injuries. I guess that's what Gordon's thinking was. Whether there's any basis in fact in it, and said we haven't studied it. Um, okay. so. Can I ask you one one final question? Because I know lots of people would like to ask questions on the on this whole business of the economics of um, football below the the Premier League. To what extent? Are you saying that you believe that's caused by players being paid too much? Or to what extent is it, is it caused perhaps by um, the way that these businesses have been run, very often with um, the people running them taking very large chunks of money out of the businesses for themselves? Um, I, I, that's an interesting notion. Um, at the moment, ac across a year, um, taking a snapshot, our owners are putting in £440 million into their clubs. In the championship, it's about £380 million, £16 million per club of owner funding, which probably makes that the most expensive lottery ticket on the planet. Uh, that's all with a view to trying to get up into the Premier League. Uh, so far from taking money out, um, owners are bailing out their clubs. Championship clubs lost 320 million in 2018. Uh, the cause of that is the gulf between the Premier League and the Championship. I mean, so, so were you hinting that there should be more money trickling down from the Premier League, or that things like salary caps should be introduced, as in rugby, into into football? I think both. I think salary caps, cost control are absolutely essential. There's a lot of debate going on about that at the moment. Um, we have an imbalance in the distribution. We have the parachute payments, which cause immense stress within the championship. So, yes, indeed, I do think the distribution model um, is a problem. Um, and as I said, mentioned earlier, any model where wages are 106% of turnover is is ridiculous but I, I said that the figure i go back to in response to your question is 440 million pounds of owner funding going into the clubs not out okay of all right thank you chair thank you philip davis